would like to, first of all, thank God for waking me up this morning. I know you should be thankful that he has woken you up also. You know, we should all be thankful. Because <laughs> he didn't have to wake us up, but he did. We have a lot of things going on in this world that we see on the news every night and every day. It's a blessing to be here. You know, and it is a blessing to be able to come to God and worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, those that come to God must worship him the way that he wants us to worship him. That is in spirit and in truth. And what that means is to clear our minds of anything that might distract us from worshiping him the way that he wants us to worship him. I would like to thank each and every one of you for your prayers on behalf of the Carvins. Uh, we had a successful trip to Georgia as part of Gary's graduation. It was very nice and rewarding institution and everything. And also, I would like to thank you again for being the village that uh, helped raise our children. We've been there for a period of time, and I know that some of you, or most of you, have said something to encourage my children. Encourage, uh, encourage us in such a way that it, benefit, it benefited them in their lives. You know, so it does take a village to raise your children. You might have said something that it might have caused them to think. You might have caused them, you might have said something that encouraged them along the way. You might have disciplined them some kind of way. Stop doing that as some when they were little kids, but we appreciate everything that you have done for our children. And we pray that you will continue to do the things that you see fit for other children because it does take a children to raise, it does take a village to raise children. Okay, yes. So uh, let's start with Father's prayer. Heavenly Father, we humbly approach the throne of grace. We thank you for who you are and for what you have done for us in our lives. We are thankful, Heavenly Father, to be come out here be able to come out here this morning to worship you in spirit and truth. We pray that this far that our worship has been pleasing and acceptable to you. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we as your family members here in person and on Zoom will be attentive to the things that will be spoken to this morning, spoken about this morning. Pray that you will be with me as I deliver this message. Pray that the words I might say might be clear and understand to each one that hear the word. And I pray that if it's something that will encourage someone to come forth and put on your son Jesus Christ in baptism, I pray that that will be happy, that will be done. Pray and give thanks in your son Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to thank uh, Pete, Pete and Kennedy for saying uh, doing the, the um, scripture reading when I was. Psalms chapter 51 verse 10 and Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. You know, um, I'd like to say that the men's Bible class, we, we've been studying out of a book that's called Renewing Your Spiritual Life. And it is done by, it was written by a brother, uh, Aubrey Johnson. And now that book has been very beneficial to me. And I probably can say that it's been bit beneficial to the other brothers also. You know, and uh, I understand that the sisters are starting to study from that book now. So I pray that the things that you study will be uh, fulfilling and rewarding in your spiritual life also. I would like to take a few moments to uh, share some of my thoughts from that book, uh, some from that book, because uh, it has blessed my life in a special way. I, I hope that it would, I would say something to encourage you that uh, you might look at things the way the world wants you to look at. So our passage that we read today, uh, Psalms chapter 51, verse 10, said, create, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. But that word renew means to change or to substitute. It means to change for the better. It means to alter or show newness. So God will work with us as we go to him in prayer. He will work with us and change our hearts and change our minds in the way that he wants us to uh, deliver our lives, to live our lives. But also, we look at Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings as eagles. They should run 
and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as we look to God for his spiritual strength that we get from him, as we pray to him and beg to him for this pure and clean heart, we want our hearts to change. But it's going to be changed in God's own time. We might be in a hurry to have things change in our life, but God, he knows best for us how he will change it at this appropriate time. So we look at those two passages there and we can see we knew there's, it's, it causes a change in our lives. So I would like to first of all say that in order to have a change in your spiritual life, you need to be able to have a covenant relationship with God. You know, that spiritual renewal won't happen unless God is in the picture. And we know that the Bible has said that this relationship that you have, you have to realize that you have fallen short of the glory of God and that you have sinned and your sin separated you from God. So first of all, you have to recognize that. This spiritual death, it says that the wages of sin is death. John chapter 6, verse 23. This death is spiritual death, the separation that we see that's in God, uh, see in, in, in your life, separating you from God. We know that God is good and he provides us for insurance policy and it's in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. We're all familiar with John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him did not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son Jesus into the world to destroy the world, but through him the world might be saved. So we are actually saved through the washing of our souls uh, through water baptism. And that's only presented by God through his mercy and his grace. You're going to look at uh, renewing your spiritual bearing. That being lost is one of life's unsettling experiences. First, a person must realize he or she is disorientated. When you're traveling down the road, you, you look for a sign to get back on track. You know, we have the sailors, they might look at the stars and navigate through the seas and the ocean. A hiker might look at the, uh, the sun to see what direction he's going so he can get back on track. It's the same way with, with uh, our spiritual life. We must realize that we need to get this direction from God. Uh, without the proper point of reference for your spiritual renewal, it is impossible to, to find your way to God. So you need to look at God and follow his direction to get your spiritual guidance. You know, if, you, if a person takes his bearings from the wrong source, he would drift farther away from God instead of drawing closer to him. Those who chart a course towards heaven must take the headings from God. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 119, 105 it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a, a light to my path. The light on the path shows you the path ahead and the direction ahead. In the same way, the word of God is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, and it guides us along the path of life to the path of eternal life. The Bible is God's instruction manual to mankind. He had given this to guide us along our journey of life. We need to look at that because God has a plan for mankind and the opportunity to come to him is on his terms and only on his terms. Jesus says, Jesus says that I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So having this life, this spiritual awakening after you wake up from spiritual, uh, after you wake up from this renewal of your spirit through water baptism, this is what we have to do to follow Jesus Christ, which is the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for my sheep. We need to follow him. We hear his voice and we follow his instruction. You know, see, at the right time, Jesus died for the ungodly. And we was part of that. It's Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for our sin. Through him, we can have, or we can know and experience God's love through his plan for our life. Jesus died in our place. He was buried and he rose again from the dead. And he's the only way to God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me 
except through Jesus Christ. And we have mentioned that a person has to be baptized for the remission of their sins, which we find in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 8. Or do you not know that many of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized in his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer live, be slaves to sin, for he died and has freed us from sin. So since a person is no longer captive of this sin, separated from God as we are baptized, we need to look to God for the, the renewal of our lives. And there are renewal, you need to renew your core values. So renewing your core values, it says in James chapter 1, verse 21 through 27, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, overflowing with wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if, if anyone is hearer of the word and not doers, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not and is not forgetful hearers but doers of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone amongst you think he is religious but does not bridle his tongue, deceive his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefined religion before God the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their time, in their troubles, and keep yourself unspotted. So we have, we have to lay aside different things in our life that prohibit us from focusing on God. We might have things that we might want to, our anger, and, uh, we might have to get rid of that. We might have to get rid of selfishness. We might need these things that keep us from God. So we have to lay aside certain things. So we have to uh, renew our values. And then along with that, we have to renew our trust to God. We have to renew our trust. Psalm chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will set your path straight. I'm getting some notes. Proverbs. So thank you. That's what do I well, think. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. Thank you. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Psalms chapter 118 and 8. It said it's better to trust in, in the Lord than put confidence in man. If we put trust in ourselves, but then we can drift farther away from God because we might think that we are right all the time. You know, and if we think we are right all the time, we don't have no room for God to discipline or to guide us in our life because uh, we get off track and we look at ourselves as being the big shot in our life. You know, it is always good to put trust in God and not in self or any other man. So with that in mind, we need to renew our, our gratitude towards him for what he has done for us in our lives. There is no situation in life which a thoughtful Christian can find reason to express thanksgiving to God because behind each moment and each situation, the spiritually discerned eye can see the presence and the provision of God. Open up your eyes and you can see it. He's there. He will bless your life, but you have to open up your eyes and you have to pursue God. You know, it's very important that we do that. So even in the midst of mis misfortune, there is ample opportunity to praise God. So when you're in trouble, God, you still can praise God because going through trouble, you experience things that will make you stronger. And, and, and God looks for people and, and members to, to depend on him to help you throughout those uh, problems that you might face in your life. And it, uh, it always says, rejoice in the Lord always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks to, to uh, this, for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. So you're always giving the thanks. You know, God has blessed each and every one of us 
in his own special way. As we look back in our life, as I can look back in mine, making it personal, I can see that he has blessed me and I'm, I'm so thankful. So each one of you can look back in your life and see that he has blessed you according to what he has seen fit. It's very important that we realize that because he didn't have to bless us. You know, we're here this morning to give him praise, give him thanks, and uh, we should be excited about the way he has treated us in the life. From the youngest in this crowd to the oldest, you can look back in the mirror of your life and see how he has blessed you. So it is a, a, you know, a blessing to be called a child of God. I wouldn't want to be nothing else but a child of God. I tried it the other way, and I have bruises to, to prove it. <laughs> Not that things happen, but you know, he's there, and he will bless your life once you move forward and recognize who he is and what he can do for you in your life. So just remember that. So you need to renew your wholehearted commitment. So I've renewed my commitment to the Lord, and that's where you get these blessings that you can renew your commitment to him. I, I remember in, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 and 15, and this is, this is, um, Moses has talked to the children of uh, Israel before they cross over the Jordan. You know, he says this to them. Now, he said, Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him sincerely, and in truth, put away the gods which your father served them on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord, and it seems evil to you. And if it seems evil to you, serve the Lord. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Rather, the gods of your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of Amorites, those lands you dwell. So he tells them this, Joshua says this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So when you serve the Lord, serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Because as the children of Israel went across Jordan, that they were going to be in a society that was different from them, and that society was going to to cause different, uh, they had different cultures that, they, that the children of Israel must not have followed because that would have drove them away from God. Just like we live in a society today that uh, the culture is a lot different and, and people are being drove away from God because of, of, of the things that's going on in this life. Because a lot of things might seem right or it might be a law that seems that things are right. But, in God's eyes, they're not quite, <laughs> they're not right in his eyes. So we have to be aware of, of who and where we are dealing, or what we're dealing with in this life. So we Christians, we Christians, we must renew our attentions to the basics. We need to go back to the basics. You know, we need to be like the Bereans. They we receive the message with eagerness and they examine the scriptures every day to see if Paul was saying what he was saying. So it's very important that we do that. And we also have to be diligent in the way that we pursue the Bible. We need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to rightly divide the word of truth. Very important that we study and look at um, the scriptures and understand what is real. We just can't read it. We have to study it and find some words and let it go in our, in our hearts. We, and also, we can't just be hearers and readers of the word. We must be doers. doers. We must apply to what we read into our lives to move on. The Apostle Paul reminded Timothy of certain things when he, he uh, wrote to him in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. And he told him, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from, knowing from whom you have learned them, and from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He's telling them that you have learned stuff. We have learned stuff in our Christian law that we need to hold on to. We need to cultivate and, and permeate in our lives so we can display that Christian attitude as we go older. And, and we need to instill that in our children. And he goes on to say in verse 16 that all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So God gives us everything that we need. He equips us. He gives us 
all things that pertain to life and godliness to help us through our, our life. Because every day we face different challenges in our life. Some challenges are more difficult than others, but that's when we need to lean closer on to the Lord. And that's why we need to renew our application of life principles every day. And the first and second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16 through 18 says, therefore do not lose heart. It's very important that we can't lose heart. Uh, even though our man is perishing, yet our end man is renewed day by day. Have anybody ever woke up in the morning and didn't feel like going to work? I know that when I was working, I, I felt that a lot. Because I knew what was going on through the day. You know what was going to happen. And anybody woke up and they had problems that were still there the next morning? I can relate to that too. You know, different problems that we might have, you know, might be kids, jobs, might be uh, other situations, might be family members, it might be uh, somebody on the job or something, but we might be faced with these challenges every day. And we know that, that we have to get up out of bed, you know, what do you do? Do you lay there and soak in or do you go to God in prayer? It's important, it's important that we look at our renewed spirit before we get up out of our bed and if we go to God with a new uh, uh, attitude, he will help us and, uh, and get us out of that bed. But we'll just stay there and be depressed. Anxiety will fill us up and we'll be overwhelmed and we stay there for a while and soak in. And we might even not even get up for a day or two, but it's, that's a cleansing part that we have to face. We have to come to judgment and come grips with ourselves. And if we rely on God, he will help us get up. I, maybe I'm talking to myself, but I experienced that a few times. I don't know if you have. You know, if somebody has an experience, please say amen. <laughs> All right. But so as we move forward in, in our lives, we need to just put that complete trust in, in God to, to uh, um, help us through those times. You know, so we need to focus on the Lord and, and devote our time to him. So we need to renew our devotion to the Lord. You know, as we renew our devotion to the Lord, we know that uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24 says, you can't serve two masters, even though you hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one or despise the other. You can't serve both God and man, and it says man and money or wealth. So the pursuit of different things in our life it becomes your God. You know, in this passage, it talks about money. The pursuit of money would, would draw people away from God. You know, we pursue God like people would pursue money. We would, you know, be rich with the spirit. You know, so it, it, it's got to be important. It's got to be a, a priority to search for God. Make that a priority in your life to pursue him and not rich. Not saying that money is bad. We all need money. It said it's the basis for all evil. It's not bad at all, but we can bless, uh, be blessed by receiving money, but it's the way that we handle it. Because at the end of the day, we're just using it anyway, passing it on. So we have to be mindful of, of, of what we're doing. And we need to pass the word of God along to our family members. And, and uh, that's why we need to renew our devotion to family, to our families. One time in this country, parents and teachers, let's say, once upon a time in this country, parents, churches, and schools work together closely to impart virtuous, the virtuous of life's principle to the next generation. We've, we've made an effort to pass different virtues on to the next generation as we pass it on to our children. You must remember that. Question is right now is where are the day's children learning their values? Where are they getting the virtues? You know, we can we can stay there for a long time, but it's it's um, interesting where they they uh, are getting their information from. We should be like the what or we should be like the Israelites. God had told them in Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four through nine, and He tells them. Say, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love your Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the side, by the way, when you slide down, and when you rise up. 
You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be a front loop between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So we need to teach our values, just like the children of Israel, just like God commanded the children of Israel to, to teach their children diligence. You know, how do you teach a child diligence? You have to keep on going over and over and over. We have to do that to ourselves sometimes. We have to keep on remembering, uh, reminding ourselves that, that God is good and he, he will take care of us. We have to instill that in our minds and in our hearts. And, and we have to just remember that because sometimes we, we, have, we, we might trouble. Everybody's full of faith, you know, and nobody have problems with their faith. Please let me know how you do it. You know, and, and talk to me after worship service and I'll be happy to, to know. I, I know we can talk script, but sometimes we just get, get weak, get tired. I know that I do, and, and that's when I have to hold on to the Lord more closely. So if you have a method, and you're completely there, let me know. But life is not over yet. So one, one time, once upon a time in the future of your life, your faith might go ruined. But just remember, hold on to the Lord. Keep on pushing and follow him. And he will bless your life. It tells you to trust in him with all the heart. He ain't not on our own understanding. So we must remember that uh, we need to teach our children the values of God and instruct them in the way. Because if we don't teach them, the world is. And if the world teaches them, they're going to be drove farther away from God. And they will never see him. So we have to remember that. So Christian, we need to face the challenges and the obstacles of life. That's why you need to renew your happiness. We need to renew your happiness because of what God did. God the Father wants men and women to believe that he is the creator of the heaven and earth and everything in it. He knows what's best to produce happiness in your life. People continue to look for satisfaction in all the wrong places. Why do you think people take drugs? Why do you think people cheat on their wives, their spouses? Why are there so many divorces? Why are there inside trading and embezzlements and other forms of greed? Satan has successfully convinced mankind that sex, money, and pleasure are the key to happiness. Sin does produce a form of happiness and <laughs> you know, joy, I must say, but it, its end is destruction. The greatest source of happiness will always be the right relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. That will bring you the greatest joy and the greatest happiness. And, and the Beatitudes teach us the basis of happiness and blessedness is putting away worldly standards and living a life built on the values of heaven. We must remember that also. The Lord wants every person to be happy, and He shows them how to be happy and with a productive life. A covenant relationship with God is the key, and the choice is not yours. God is not going to twist your form. He's not going to break you. He's going to be there for you. But we, we must recognize that he is the one. He rewards those who diligently search him, seek him. We might not understand why and what happens. Maybe let me straighten my way. We might not understand everything that happens to us in life. We know that God knows. We know that we need to renew our, our respect for the secret things of God because some things we just won't understand. Uh, God said in, in, in Isaiah 55, mate, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways are your ways, said the Lord. So uh, God asked Job in Job 11 can you search out the deep things of God can you find the limits of the Almighty? The secret of the, here's Psalm chapter 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he shows them to them that follow his covenant. That's in Psalm 25, 14. So we have a covenant relationship. God would expose to us the things that are secret. And we can understand certain things when we are in trouble. And we know that the Spirit search out all things that uh, will help us in our time of need. First Corinthians chapter 2 and 10 says, but God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. 
So we, we must understand. We might not know everything, and we, we just try to do our best in our life. And, and the Spirit helps us and help guide us along in our life. So in Second Peter, chapter one, one through four, Simon Peter he makes a statement that uh, God's divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world of lust. Anyway, God has given us everything that we need to, that pertains to life, spiritual godliness, <laughs> to help us get along in our life. So we might not understand why we go through some of the things that we go through in life, but as I said, God knows. That's why you need to renew your confidence in God's providential care, God's divine care for our life. And we're all familiar with Psalms chapter 23 and verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup run over. Surely, goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life, and I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's God's promise. He will take care of those who follow him. That is his promise that we as sheep of this pastor will be given eternal life once we go through this life and we put our trust, total trust in him. He will give this to us, and we have to believe that. We have to believe that he takes care of us and he will reward us at the end of our life. We don't know when that is, but we need to hold on until the last amen. Amen? Amen. So in the conclusion of my lesson this morning, you just remember as you take these steps to renew your spiritual life, to make a change in your life for the better, go to God in prayer. Ask God for his strength because your strength is insufficient. You don't have enough strength to fight Satan and all his tactics. You don't have enough strength to maneuver through this world with all the things that's going on. You need a more powerful being, which is our God, to help you maneuver through life. When you think that you are strong enough, that's when you take a great fall. Some of the greatest men in, in life have fallen because they take things in their own hands. Either they, they, are in, they will end in destruction, believe me, one way or another. As you go, go with God's, go with God's power. And we're reminded in Ephesians chapter six, verse ten through twelve, and He says, "Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in His power of His might. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might, not my might, not your might, not somebody else's might, but in His might, the Almighty God's might." He says, "Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Don't put your armor." because it will melt, it will disintegrate, your spiritual armor will burn up. <laughs> so put on his armor. And it says that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And here's the point, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So the dimension that's out there that we <laughs> I'm afraid of, you know, but I need God to help me to, you know, to look at that dimension in a different way. I look at the heavenly dimension, which gives me joy and peace. That other dimension is where Satan is, and that brings me kind of like if I focus on too much, it could bring you anxiety, it could bring you problems, it could bring you, uh, you know, discussion. Um, uh, I should say the discussion could go on and on by what's on the other side. But we could look on the good side, we know what's there because God promises that. So we need to remember to create in me a clean heart, a new renewed spirit, and God will guide us through those things. And it will be on this, this time. You know, so look upon the law. So you are not a child of God. You would like to be one. You have heard the gospel. You have heard that Jesus came down to this earth. He, he paid a price that 
Mankind could not save. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. You must believe that. You must repent of your sins, saying, that, well, I'm tired of living one way, and I want to live for God. I want to, I want to take, take my course and my direction from God. And then you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you'll be washed in water baptism for forgiveness of your sins. And then you can live a newness in life. And this newness in life will bring you joy, happiness, and peace that you know you have a relationship with God. You still might have struggle, but you can have someone that will help you in your time of trouble and keep you on the straight path. So if you're a Christian and, and you would like some prayers on behalf of your situation, we can pray for you and we can uh, cater to your need. I know everybody needs prayers. But whatever your situation is, whatever your need is, you can make it known as together we stand and sing the invitation song.